Well, hello, Eon Timeline 3. Aren't you coming out right when I need a visual of how my character's backstories and my work in progress fit in a specific time? Sure, I could use the Eon Timeline I already own, but that's old, boring, not new and shiny like 3 is. Okay, okay, let's be honest. I thought I was done reviewing running software. Reviewing Plotter broke me. Not because it's bad, it's not, it is. I just realized how picky I am and how no software can live up to Scrivener. Scrivener is the best. It's not for everyone, but it is king. And for those who Scrivener is not for, you have my pity. Because you'll never be real writers. Just kidding. Oh, and I realized one other thing. I don't like making review videos. They're too long to edit, but here I am making another one. How long is this video, Editor Tim? Oh boy, that's long. Possibly? I don't know. I'm just basing it on the script. Oh, I should probably give a shout out since someone requested me make this review of E on Timeline 3. So, here it is. Just so you know, I have not used everything in this software. So if you're looking for a review that will cover everything, look elsewhere. Now, with my overly long intro done, Let's dive into my review of Eon Timeline 3. Eon Timeline is a visual timeline application designed to help keep track of any time-based projects. Unlike other timeline software, this was designed by writers who saw that most timeline software was not up to the task to be used in any way efficient. Let's be honest, we writers are fickle beasts who can't make up our damn minds, so our timelines need to be able to change on a whim. And they can. Yay for us. Aeon Timeline 3's interface is pretty streamlined once you're in a document. Timeline dates on the top, events go below, add events and filters and extra window views on the side. Wait, why does this sound so familiar? Oh wait, I covered this in my Aeon Timeline 2 review. Which according to comments was uninspiring, long-winded, so true. Also, way too fast to follow along. Wait, does that make a tutorial? Oh right, probably had something to do with that long-winded thing. If you'd like to learn more in-depth on how things worked in a review that sounds like a tutorial that isn't, check out my Eon Timeline 2 review. Things really haven't changed except that they got rid of those damn entities. Thank God. Since I started Interface, I should probably wrap it up before moving on to what's new. Oh boy, there are new toys to play with. The timeline is far cleaner and so much better than previous iterations. The filters and ad events are in a far better location than in the goddamn upper left hand corner Eon Timeline 2. I'm not sure how I like the welcome screen. Eon Timeline 2 showed you all your options of the timelines. Now you have to click this button here to get a window and not huge icons representing the timeline options. Oh well, did I mention all the divided windows? This way you can have your timeline and your relationships open together. I swear you have endless divided window. You have a total of five windows. Wrong again, because if you change one that splits it to vertical, now you have so many more windows. How many? Don't know. I like the layout of this software. Good job, Eon Timeline. A+. Plus. So you might be asking yourself, this is all great Tim, but what's new? Good question, and the simple answer is a lot. Now I have to say this right here, I have not used most of these new features, yet. Yes, I have to say that, or someone will comment something about how this is a bad review when I haven't used the whole software and didn't say it. What am I saying? Someone still will. So how can I review something I haven't used? Simple by reviewing what the software is, a timeline software. Also, I said this in my intro, so if you skipped it, and let's be honest, you probably did, that's on you. All the new features belong, but are different than the actual timeline. Example, these three features, narrative, outline, and mind map, the latter being the least needed, but I'm still happy is there. While I have yet to use these features, I'm excited to give them a go. I do think they potentially add to the software but no one's going to buy this software 
just because they are included. Let's be honest, if you're checking out Eon Timeline, you're looking specifically for Timeline software. Now let's go over what I have used. No, 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 no. I have not used Subway either. The only new feature I've used is the spreadsheet, and I love it. It makes it so much easier to add events to the timeline. It isn't the most appealing way to do it, but it's so much faster than doing it on the timeline, especially if you're putting in events that are far apart. You have to wait for the timeline to zoom to that location to continue. The spreadsheet is the way to add events, period. Characters are not new, but they're far easier to make and edit than in past versions. Relationships have been vital to my work in progress. It allows me to see my characters ages at specific events. If you're wondering about other features in the past that are still here, yes sci-fi fantasy writers, create a custom calendar is still here. This has been a pretty positive review. So is there anything bad or low points? Good question. What are the key problems with Eon Timeline 3? First is the workflow, and this is only for those who have used other versions of Eon Timeline. It took me a while to get used to this version. It was only after I looked and tried spreadsheets did it take off, and I really started to like this version. Second, custom calendars is a joke, sorta. You can create your own calendar just like before. My issue is with Eon Timeline insisting that you must have a BC and an AD. For starters, it's before Common Era, BCE, and Common Era, CE. It is 2022. As a timeline software company, you should know this and label them correctly. With that out of the way, you don't need them. You are required to have a BC that counts endlessly backward and an AD that counts endlessly forward. Yes, I'm aware I didn't say them correctly. I'm talking about how they are in the software. If I didn't, someone would call me out in the comments. What am I saying? Someone still will. I'm screwed either way. Yes, you can create your own eras. None of them can be your current era. Your current era will be AD or whatever you rename it. This is stupid. Let's say I want to come back to an old story for a sequel. It takes place centuries later and in a new era meaning my original story is in a different era. How it is now means I have to start a new timeline or go back to those old events and change the era for every one of them. Either way, it's too much work. Add in the fact I still can't edit my calendar after I start adding events to the timeline, which is dumb. Sure, I understand why, but I'm also sure it's possible to do this. Yes, I'm sure it's not easy. Those are my biggest problems with this software. Oh wait, there's one more. Where the f is my multi-calendars Eon Timeline? What do I mean by multiple calendars you ask? Since the dawn of Eon Timeline over a decade ago, fantasy writers have been requesting multiple calendars. You know, so we can see how events line up between two different calendars. Like a solar and a lunar calendar. Or in the case in sci-fi fantasy writers, different worlds. How great would it be to see a visual representation of the timeline of Earth and Narnia, or other Portal fantasy series? This feature has been requested for far too long without it having been added to the software, especially since Eon Timeline has promised it since users started requesting it. No, 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 no. I do not care what your poll says your users want. This was started for writers, and it is nice you went back to your roots for Eon Timeline 3. But instead of giving us features we did not ask for, give us the one f one that we've asked for for a decade. Okay, with that out of the way, let's talk tutorials. At least I'll start to wrap this up on a good note. With any software, there's going to be a learning curve. Thankfully, Eon Timeline has several video, video, oh dear god. Where are the f***ing video tutorials, Eon Timeline? It is 2022. People do not read tutorials with in-depth text and pictures. We want short how-to videos so we can figure out 
How to do whatever we're trying to do. No, you cannot rely on YouTube to provide these tutorials for you. Oh wait, there are only one, and that's in German, I think. Or this one that you have to pay $137 for. This is absolute bull and I know what I'm about to say is dated, and I don't care. Not having video tutorials in 2022 is the epic of all fails. With all that we get with Eon Timeline, how much does it cost? Well, you get all of this for $64.99. If you already own Eon Timeline 2, you get $25 off, which is a steal. $65 is a high price point, especially compared to what you get with Scrivener for $50. Didn't think I would come back to Scrivener, did you? Remember, I'm Scrivener bias. Scrivener rocks. Back to my point, $65 is a lot. But if you're going to use it a lot, it is worth it. What's this? Keep me updated after the first year? $34? Get updates every year? What the f is this bull? Bull sh In my personal opinion, this means you need money to pay your bills. That one software doesn't do it once it's out. You put a software out, you support it until the company closes, or you put a new version out. Now, if we're paying so we can add new features, I can understand that. However, that isn't it. You are paying to keep your software up to date, with the possibility of getting new features a part of the updates that come that year, but no guarantee. Incentive is not enough. You're trying to put the decision in our hands it's your way of talking around how bad this looks and is. Sure, we still get updates and features for the first year. Good. However, I will not be paying more when my year runs out, unless they add the multiple calendars that I screened about earlier. As I was going to say before I had to go on this stupid rant, the price point is way too high, especially for the bullshit $34 a year for support. There is no way I would have bought this if I didn't save $25 for owning version 2. Which is $40 and that's pushing it. I'm not even going to get started on the moronic 14 day free trial. It's 30 days people, 30 days. As much as I screamed about stupid things like tutorials, price, and not having multiple calendars, I do really enjoy Eon Timeline 3. All the new features like Subway, Narrative, Outline, Mind Map are great ads, and potentially justify the $65 price point if they are good. It's also a great nod to why this software was started, for writers. No, I do not think people would not buy the software if they weren't included, that would be the too high price point. There are a lot of problems though with no video tutorials, features that have been asked for since software's inception, and the stupidity of paying for updates after the first year with no guarantees of new features. If you strip all my faults away, this software would easily be a 7. However, these faults are there and some are mind-boggling. My grade for Eon Timeline 3 is sadly a 5. It's average. It would be much higher without the stupid pay for support and if the price point was a little lower. Thank you for watching my review of Eon Timeline 3. Down in the comments, let me know what you thought of this review, and if you'll give Eon Timeline 3 a try. If you found this review helpful, please share this on your social media. Also, why not smash that like button and subscribe? When I have tried the other features on Eon Timeline 3, I'll post a follow-up video which will be on the left. If it's not there, why not watch the other video I'm trying to get you to watch instead? Thanks for watching. Bye.